Look what arrived today, everybody. Hey, man, if you only got this hurt season hat, I'm telling y'all, y'all better get it now because uh, it's popping off, man. LB's, uh, he's doing his thing, bro. These things are selling, man. Y'all get your hats. All right, we're going to talk about the preseason game. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about what occurred last night because, man, there were some positive developments, no doubt about it. What's up, Cerebral Football fans? My name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. Hey, if you are new to the channel, this may be the first, second, third time you caught my content and you enjoyed today's discussion. Hey, look, we just crossed over 6,100 subscribers. We're on a journey towards 7,500 subscribers. I'd love to add you to the community. Just need you to subscribe to do that. So my old G subscribers here know I'm going to ask you to do, guys. Hey, if you can help me out and keep hitting that like button, keep smashing the thumbs up button, help me spike the algorithm and get this in front of new people to potentially convert into our little community here on YouTube, guys. All right, uh... Man, I gotta be honest. I, I know that um, some of you guys sent me that little clip and you, you wanted me to break down what was said about Jalen Hurts. I, I'm not gonna do that, man. I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I, I will say that there were some things factually he said that were just, they conflict. Like, the facts conflict with his statements, to be quite honest. But I thought LB already did kind of handle that, guys. I mean, that's not, to me, that's not really worth going into. It's not really worth talking about, honestly. Uh, what I will say about Jalen Hurts is, when we ended last season, a lot of you guys asked me, like, hey, Steve, you know, you've coached quarterbacks, you know, you, you played it yourself. I mean, you look at his play, how does, how does he get better? Like, what's going on? How does he take the next jump? And I told you guys, simply put, this is all about him learning how to put the offense into rhythm, right? You know, we talked a lot about hitting your rhythm step, you know, when you hit your drops as a quarterback, when you get to that rhythm step, you have to make that executive decision whether you're going to release the ball or whether you are going to hitch up and go to your second read. We talked about all that stuff. What I saw last night, which stood out to me about Jalen Hurts and this offense, was decisive decision-making. I know that some people didn't like the fact that we didn't take deep shots, although I will say the opening play to Quez was 20-plus yards. I mean, I guess it depends upon your definition of what you're considering a deep shot. To me, that's a deep shot. But nonetheless, I don't think that was the offense's problem. Jalen Hurts already ranked in terms of attempts. He was one of the highest-ranking attempt guys over 20 yards last season. He was top 10. So, I mean, to me, that's not where the offense you had to, to, to pay attention to. I needed to see this young man be able to get the offense into a rhythm, take what the defense gave him, make those quick decisions, and let's keep moving the sticks. And there was a couple plays on that drive where he made those quick, decisive decisions, got the ball out, took what the defense gave him, kept us into a rhythm, and kept the ball moving. That's the development personally I wanted to see and that's what I saw play out last night it's looking up in my opinion guys I think Jalen Hurts is really starting to look up I, I mean I gotta be honest I, I'm expecting him to have a really really good season because he's put in a lot of time and effort he's put in a lot of work it speaks a lot about who he is as an individual you know you guys ask me all the time like how many times does this get repeated though by quarterback how often does this happen it doesn't happen often I wouldn't project this for most people I'm projecting it for Jalen Hurts because of who the individual is. I believe in that individual. And I got to tell you, man, he might be better than what I'm even thinking, to be honest. I thought he had a heck of a game. I'm not going to lie. Uh, welcome to Philly Kaiser White. <laughs> One of the guys I named in that little pamphlet. You guys remember when I did the uh, top five free agent you know, linebackers at Fit Gannon System? I named Kaiser White, and I told you guys that, hey, man, he's an undersized guy that used to play safety. He was kind of a roving Safety, kind of an inbox safety at West Virginia, but they got converted into a wheel linebacker with the Chargers. And I told you, when I watched this film last year, I came away going, wow, who is this dude? I was pretty excited to get him on Philly. I thought he was a pretty good run defender, even though he's a little undersized. I thought that he was ferocious. He just has a nose for the football, and he doesn't shy away from contact. Even, like I said, he's a little undersized, no doubt about it, for a linebacker, but he plays a lot bigger than what his weight is. Man, you saw what he could do. He read that. He read, you heard it even in the press conference, he talks about he was just basically reading the body language of Zach Wilson, and that's how he knew where the ball was going. Kaiser White, man, that's, this defense, whew, boy, Jordan Davis. Man, how many people does it take to block Jordan Davis? I still think teams are trying to figure that out, because uh, I think this is just the additions we've made defensively with James Bradbury. You know, Jordan Davis, Kaiser White, these little signings, these little, you know, draft picks. And I know one draft pick's really not little at all, but I think these things are going to 
I mean, they're going to change the whole entire field of this defense, guys. The fact that we can stop the runs early in, in games, right? Go back to the Dallas game. Everyone remembers that C.D. Lamb catch, right? The one that got the deep shot on one of the safeties on us in that game. What everyone forgets is, is that Dak actually had the second fewest attempts he had on the season. He had a 30% pressure rate, so basically one out of every three passes, he had someone in his face or he got knocked off his spot. And he ended up throwing a pick six. It was the running game that destroyed us that first time around versus Dallas. Our inability to stop the run was a problem last year, early on. We got a lot better as the season went on, no doubt about it. But you put Jordan Davis in there and you got to commit less guys to it and you could drop more people back into actual you know, coverage, now you see the results of that zone coverage system, right? That soft coverage looks a lot different when you can get guys into the proper spacing. When you got guys that can read the quarterback, it makes a big difference. And I'm excited to see how this, this whole unit shakes out, man. James Bradbury... Darius Slay out there going to give them guys some opportunities, I think, to make some big plays. It's going to be an exciting season, guys. I'm, I'm really pumped from what I saw here. Uh, N'Kobe Dean. Holy crap, man. N'Kobe Dean definitely, uh, the instincts, the physicality. I mean, I knew the young man was more physical than what people thought. And a lot of people, oh, he's little, he's little. He's only like 5'11", like 225, 230. Yeah, well, talk to that offensive lineman, he, he planted because... Kobe Dean's got that instinct, man. Sometimes it ain't about that, bro. Sometimes it's about the fight in the dog. Sometimes you know that saying. It's not about the size of the dog. It's about the fight inside the dog. Kobe Dean's got that fighting spirit, bro. I mean, there's no doubt about it, in my opinion. Like, that guy, number one, he's a heat-seeking missile. I mean, he just finds ball carrier, destroy ball carrier. And then number two, he's physical. He's really physical up at that line. With him, TJ Edwards, I think we got something kind of brewing here, man. Kaiser White. Uh, we haven't got a really good chance to see Sean Bradley play a bunch of snaps yet, but I know Sean Bradley in that reserve role, he can do some stuff, man. I mean, you know, Davion Taylor is probably the most athletically gifted out of everybody. I mean, the guys, you know, if you want a sideline to sideline movement linebacker, Davion Taylor can do that for you. I mean, I, I just, I feel so good about where this team is. And I just felt like last night helped confirm what a lot of us were thinking. I will tell you this, um, one under the radar player that I thought had a, a pretty good game. I thought he, he, he showed some athleticism I didn't know was there. Um, I thought his instincts kicked in pretty well. Playing deep against, you know, guys that are probably not going to be on NFL rosters, to be fair. But Reed Blankenship kind of played pretty well, guys. That's a name I haven't heard anyone else talk about yet. But I thought Reed Blankenship played pretty well. You know, we'll have to see. I mean, I, some of these guys, you have to see them against better competition to, to really make a, a judgment call on them. I don't think this is a guy that's going to necessarily crack the 53-man roster. But I definitely think he earned himself, you know, a look on the practice squad as someone that could be developed and potentially pushed for a roster spot, you know, the next year, you know, prior to this. I will say another thing, guys. Zach McPherson, some of these guys, Josiah Scott, some of these second-year guys in the secondary. Tay Gowan. Hey, man, those guys look different. Those guys are playing pretty well, in my opinion. Uh, I, some of the younger guys that we had a lot of high hopes for, the, the moment looked a little big. If I'm going to be honest, that, that doesn't mean they're cooked yet, guys. I mean, it's tough the very first time you step onto an NFL film or field, you know. we got to remember for these guys, it might be preseason, but this is the first time they've gone in NFL uniform. They've been in front, you know what I mean? Like, all those things, all those emotions. So, got to give them time to kind of see where they're at. I mean, for N'Kobe Dean and Jordan Davis, it was business as usual. For Cam Jurgens, I mean, holy crap, man. <laughs> yeah, my guy Philly Mike. You're right, that's Kelsey Jr., bro. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. That dude moves. He looks... If you if you change their numbers, if you put 62 on him and dyed his hair darker, I would think that was Kelsey out there. The way he moves. I, I mean, it, it's basically like you just cloned Kelsey to try to stick around for another 10 years. Now, look, I, I want to pump the brakes because I know what I just said, but you still got to learn conceptually the game. How to set and alter protection, things like that. There, there's some things on the cerebral level he has to, to get to still. But athletically... Holy crap, he was on display. He was on display last night, guys. I didn't have a doubt about that young man's athleticism. That boy can play. No doubt about it. Um, outside of that, I thought Huntley had an okay game, to be honest with you. I don't think he's going to make the team if I'm being... I don't know if he'll be on the initial 53. It seems like a long shot to me, but I thought he I thought he held himself up, man. You could tell that Huntley's gotten better each year. You know, going all the way back to 2020, man, it's, it's crazy to think that Huntley's been here now. It's his third year, but... I mean, I see these little subtle improvements in guys. Like, Huntley's definitely gotten better each year. And, and there were times he looked pretty explosive last night. I mean, I still think sometimes he tries to do a little too much instead of taking what's given to him. But 
I definitely felt like he was, you know, the athleticism was there for him. Outside of that, guys, man, I mean, you know, I'm not too sure what's going on with Reed Sinet. I'll be honest with you, I wasn't overly impressed with that. That young man is not ready to push Garner Minshew. I didn't see that last night. Perhaps I'm wrong, and perhaps he's going to prove me wrong in the next game. But from what I saw, it was a young man that still has a lot to learn about making decisions with the football. There's Look, I'm not trying to knock me, uh, Reed Sinet, because I'll be honest with you, there's some pop in his arm. That young man's got some zip on the football. There's something there. I definitely get what the Eagles are looking at. I know what they want to develop with him. I see it. But the decision-making is nowhere near good enough, in my opinion, to be a second-string quarterback right now. now. Maybe he's got to work out some jitters. It could have just been, you know, like, hey, man, I'm in front of this crowd. You know, everything's kind of going at me. I'm not re- you know, I didn't get a lot of reps yet. Perhaps he's just got to iron some stuff out, and he's, he actually does have the ability to do it. But I'll just say, judging solely from that game alone last night, no way. No way he's ready to push Gardner Minshew, in my opinion, right now. With that said, he is worth developing. I mean, yeah, man, dude, dude's got a little bit of an arm to him, man. There's no doubt about that. There's a little pop on that arm. All right, guys, let me let me know your thoughts. Who who stood out to you? Who's the guy that you like kind of watched and said, you know what, you know, Steve, low key, I think I thought he had a really good game. Like I thought he came in and played pretty well, actually. Um, Kavon Wallace, I need to go back and watch the film, guys. I'm I'm coming out neutral on Kavon Wallace. I don't know. I need to go back, watch the film, and kind of get a feel for. For what, you know, I, I saw him in the games a few times. I was trying to, if you guys were following me on Twitter, you guys saw I was trying to, like, get you all the lineups and tell you what I was seeing here. One note I'll give you before we jump off of here. Hey, man, Gannon did a lot to mix up that, that line. There was a lot of single overhangs and dual, double overhangs. So there was definitely some Vic Fangio to the defense there. I can't say what the coverage was without all 22 guys. I can't really say if he was playing that quarter, quarter, half. I, I need to see the all 22 or I need to get an aerial shot what's going on to determine that, but definitely in terms of the overhangs, there were some elements of that last night, guys. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all so much, guys, and uh, hey, see y'all in the next video.